Welcome to Novel Spotlight, the podcast where published fiction writers are interviewed to gather their insights and writing lessons so we can use them to make ourselves better and more effective writers. There are just three things I ask of you, if appropriate to you and your experience. Please subscribe, please click on the like button, and please share this program link with any family members, friends, or colleagues who might be interested or benefit from the content. Now, on with our program. A few episodes back, I did an interview with Nancy Stolman, and she talked about flash fiction. She talked about, you know, what if I take a piece of writing, and she said, and I take out all the boring stuff. Reduce it down to flash fiction by taking out all the connective tissue, all the boring stuff, take out all the non-essential copy, and what do you have left? If it's done right, you have an airtight piece of writing is what she says. I mean, airtight piece of writing is, is my phrase, not hers, but essentially she's saying you've got something that's burns hot, short in duration, but interesting and rich in content. Something where there is no opportunity to get bored with anything for the reader because it advances itself word by word and sentence by sentence. Flash fiction isn't for everyone, but you could adopt that mindset that she's talking about to regular full-length fiction and keep writing until we really feel that everything here is of interest. Everything here is worthy of somebody's time. Now, how stringent are we about that? I think it's critical to be stringent in that way. And the fact of the matter is that why it takes so long to get writing done. Because you have to do so much writing to produce what you really want to put in front of people or, or something that's really going to win the day. So lessons of flash fiction can be applied to the long, to long form fiction or to short stories. And it's especially important now because it takes so much effort to get a person's attention. There are so many podcasts. There are so many movies, so many TV shows and streaming channels. And because of that, it takes extraordinary effort to get and retain a person's attention. So what does it take to pull a reader in? When so many people read little more than, say, Twitter posts, Facebook posts, Instagram, LinkedIn, it takes an experience you cannot get elsewhere. That's the writer's challenge, to put readers, to put them in an environment Put them with people in situations that cannot be replicated in the nonfiction, secular, temporal world that we live in. Some people would take what I just said and, and say, well, then I need to write fantasy or science fiction where I'm taking the person to a completely different realm. But I don't think that's the case at all. I think that what people want... I mean, what sells really well, as an example, is the romance genre, which tells you something. People are hungry for relationships. And the way we live today, the way we live disconnected or tenuously connected lives where we use social media to create or sustain relationships with people we never really see, never will see again for the rest of our lives, is that really a relationship? Is that really feeding us, the social media reading? It's a very tenuous relationship at best, and that's what we have these days, a collection of tenuous social media relationships, when by contrast, well-rendered fiction can create relationships that people are not getting in their lives, that they're not getting in the nonfiction world that they live in the kind of relationships that they're not getting through social media, not getting through maybe even their workplace, especially now that so many of us work remotely. People are working at home these days. They're not going into an office and actually seeing people and hearing firsthand about trials and tribulations and adventures that their coworkers are living through. So where does that connection, the kind of connection that makes us privy to maybe some extraordinary relationships, extraordinarily good, bad, or dysfunctional relationships, 
that we don't get in the quote-unquote real world, those are the words on the written page or the spoken words from an audiobook. And that's our challenge. We don't have to create another world, as in a science fiction or fantasy world. We simply have to create an environment with people and connections that engage a person, that, that engages the reader or the listener, and connect them in a way that they don't get in their daily lives. I mean, there's a lot of people out there who read because they don't have the kind of relationships or the kind of interesting people in their lives that they're looking for. And we can take them to those places. We can take them on travel to Bali or exotic locales of the Middle East or Asia, to the cafes of Europe. It's a challenge, but nobody writes without being challenged. I mean, no serious fiction writer isn't being challenged. That's part of what we love and hate about the writing process. You know, how does Stephen King do it? How does Nelson DeMille do it? How does Danielle Steele or John Grisham or Kurt Vonnegut do it? If we look at what they've done and what they're doing, and we look at how their works of fiction are constructed, we learn something. That's why I don't read fiction like I used to. I read it very analytically. I don't read it for stories so much, although sometimes the story is so good, I'm, I'm swept up by the story. Sometimes it's, it's a very simple story. I mean, right now I'm reading Perfume, the, the story of a murder. You may have heard of it. Patrick Susskind, he's a novelist who lives in Munich, Germany. The novel was celebrated when it came out back in 2001, I believe, was when it was published. And it's a simple story, and it just takes you along. It's very easy to track. And then in addition to that story that tracks easily, there is, there are all the elements to his character development and his actual sentence construction. But in most cases, I'm reading a novel for the characters, the quality of writing, the wordplay. And then I especially, you know, cherish books that tell a great story to boot, but accomplish that in a literary fashion that appeals to, to readers and critics. Books that well, books that become bestsellers that are both critically acclaimed and sell well. Well, obviously, <laughs> a bestseller sells well. But to also get the critical acclaim, it's so rare because people, I mean, what do we do? We either are going for kind of the money, kind of the, the, the market, the, the broad market, while other people are not necessarily shooting for that, but as a byproduct of the work they they've done. I mean, The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt, um, hugely acclaimed by the critics, huge seller, turned into a movie, All the Light That We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr, came out about the same time, was at the top of the bestseller list along with The Goldfinch for a long, long time. And wow, what a beautiful piece of writing that is. And a bestseller to boot. The critics love the book. Readers love the book. Everyday readers love the book. But that's pretty uncommon, you know, to have a bestseller and a critically hailed book. The House of Sand and Fog. I, I recently read The House of Sand and Fog. What a great piece of work. Andre Debus III, who I'm hoping to have on the program uh, down the road here in the next several months. No commitment yet, but um, but the feelers are out there. Great book, and he even made a good movie. Another example of a really well-written book, critically acclaimed book, embraced in big numbers by readers. So yeah, I'm at a stage in my life where I've never been pickier about what I read. There are so many possibilities, and if it doesn't feed my heart or my head, I move on to something else. So that's what we're doing, or at least trying to do, is give people experiences and relationships that they're not getting in their daily lives. There's always something missing in anyone's life. There's always a place for us to plug in. The hard part is finding that magic formula. 
but we persevere. That's what we do. That's what writers do. That's what fiction writers do. We persevere. Thank you for listening. This is my counsel for Novelist Spotlight.